Most guys think that they're pretty good in bed, but the truth is there are actually very, very few great lovers out there, but the majority have got a lot to learn. This might be a tough pill to swallow, but it doesn't have to be because in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how to know if you are not actually as good as you think you are and how to get better. I mean, how to get way better. I mean, how to get to that A++, make her weak in the knees, thinking about you all day, fantasizing, panties dropping, dripping, wet kind of love making. I'm gonna go through my top 10 signs that you are not not fully pleasing your partner. And it is important to remember that no one teaches us this stuff. So don't be too hard on yourself. If you find yourself relating to a lot of these points, don't beat yourself up about it. You're watching this video, which means that you actually give a about female pleasure. That, my friend, puts you way far ahead of the curve. Before I get to the list, let us first understand why so many guys are living in a fantasy land when it comes to their own bedroom skills. Here's the thing. Most women are afraid to ask for what they really want. They're afraid to let loose in the bedroom. And most of all, they are afraid of hurting your feelings. So many women will settle for a mediocre lover if they just really like him. I mean, women will make sex all about the connection. We'll focus on the positive. A woman can dress up a man. She can make a mountain out of a molehill. She will focus on whatever is working. If she likes you, if she loves you, if she just wants to, you know, stay happy and have this sort of like mediocre sex life with you, the, the good enough sex life, she can make that work. On top of that, because there are so few men out there who really know their way around a woman's body, subscribers to this channel, not among them. Most women don't even know the kind of pleasure their bodies are capable of receiving because no one has ever shown them. So even if she literally tells you that you are good in bed, she might not be a qualified judge. Now, regardless of how many of the following 10 signs you can relate to, it is important to not rest on our laurels or our big sausages, gentlemen, it is up to you to always be getting better. Trust me, being a better lover is a lifetime journey with no destination. There is no peak to this mountain, but it is worth it to keep on climbing. So let's dive in. Here are the 10 signs that let you know you could be better in bed. Number 10, she doesn't initiate sex. Hear me out. There is a narrative out there that just women aren't as sexual as men. They crave sex less and they're shy about initiating. Well, I'm here to tell you that is bull. It is not that we crave sex less. It's just that our standards for sex are a lot higher. And if it's just okay, we're less likely to initiate. But if you are giving our body what it really needs, you will know because we are not ashamed to beg for it. The truth is, if you are rocking her world, like truly laying premium high grade pipe, she is going to ask you to do it and often. So if you find that your partner isn't initiating sex, that is a good sign that it is time to switch up your bedroom routine and ask her what she needs to get her there. Or, you know, watch the rest of my channel and figure it out for yourself. That brings me to number nine. She rushes you. Just stick it in. I don't need foreplay, said no sexually satisfied woman ever. If she's really into what you're doing, she isn't going to want it to end. Another alternative to this is when she just wants you to finish quickly. I'm going to go ahead and break girl code here, but this is for the greater good. If she says anything along the lines of, I just want you to come or come on, come for me or come on, are you ready? Nine times out of 10, she's just trying to get it over with. Yes. Sometimes women say this because they've been truly satisfied. They can't take anymore. Maybe she's had five or orgasms, it's been 30 minutes, she's complete. But most of the time it's because she's either not that into it, it doesn't feel that good, or maybe she's just getting a little sore. Sure, I want you to come all over me might sound super hot and like she's really into it, and that's on purpose. Chances are that she wants you to blow your load so that she can get on with her day. All right, side number eight. You f like a porn star. In case you thought f***ing like a porn star was a compliment, I have to break it to you, it is not. If you learned how to have sex from watching porn, the women that you are sleeping with can f*** 
fucking tell and they don't like it. If you watched my show Good Sex on Max, then you're already aware of this. Porn is made for straight men for their viewing pleasure. It's not made to show you what real sex looks like and it definitely isn't made to teach you how to please a woman. Instead of looking to what's on your laptop, shift your focus onto the body that's right in front of you. Go slow, listen to her needs, have conversations about preferences, and let your actual body, not your eyes, guide the way. Brings me to number seven, it's the same every time. Nobody wants a one-trick pony. Great sex is fluid, it's present, it allows for spontaneity. It is a second-to-second -second experience between two people. If you are doing it the same way every single time, the chances are that you are not present with her body and her needs. So get some toys, get some lube, explore the erotic blueprints, have conversations about fantasies, watch the 400 fucking videos on this channel, do anything to switch it up and explore. Whether you've had sex with one woman a hundred times or a hundred women one time, if you are doing the same thing every time, how do I put this harshly? You're doing it wrong. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Harsh, but true. Hey, I'm not here to hurt your feelings. I'm here to make you epic. All right. Number six, you don't communicate. I hope it's clear by now that everyone can get better, especially when it comes to sex. And yes, we are all in our way, special snowflakes who have our, our individual preferences and needs. Even if you knew exactly what made your last lover tick, you're gonna have some stuff to learn with the next one. And even if you're monogamous, it is important to remember that people's preferences and their needs change over time. I mean, women's bodies change week over week. If your partner isn't giving you any feedback or if she's telling you that there's nothing that you can do better, well, son, guess what? She probably doesn't think that you can. She doesn't think you can hear her or she doesn't think that you're actually gonna be able to improve. And maybe it's a communication issue or maybe she doesn't even know how it could be better because, you know, she doesn't have the erotic creativity and you haven't been tuning into your own erotic creativity in order to show her what's possible. Either way, it is time to start communicating. Number five sign, she's not coming every single time. Okay, quick story. I have a friend who thought for her entire adult life that she just struggled to get to orgasm. She had no troubles when she was masturbating, but when she was with men, she found out that she could really only come when she was on top. And then she met a guy who gave her multiple orgasms every single time that they hooked up. And she realized that the problem was never her body. It was just that most men weren't actually putting in the effort to get her there. Look, it's normal for every single one of us, no matter of gender, to struggle to reach orgasm from time to time. But if you are leaving her without a big finish on the regular, it's time to ask yourself if you're having sex or if you're just using her body to masturbate. And if she tells you that she just struggles to get there, well, that's it's not an excuse. It just means that most of the sex that she's been having probably hasn't really been all that great. If she's able to come on her own when she's masturbating with ease, then she should be able to come with a partner. So be patient, be communicative, and figure out a way to get her there. Number four, you don't laugh or cry. Truly great sex is connective and vulnerable. It's also an emotional act. If you aren't laughing, crying, everything in between, then there is room to open up and go way deeper with your sexual relationships. I mean, sometimes sex feels hot and urgent and serious, but if you're hitting the same emotional note every single time, it means that you are not creating space to show up as you both are and to connect on a deeper level. Sex is funny. Have you ever seen your face when you're doing sex? You're hysterical. Sex is silly, it's sad, it's beautiful, it's human, it's everything on the spectrum of the human experience. It is an entire emotion in itself. It is an expressive act between two people. Also, sometimes like your body sounds like it made a fart. The greatest lovers, they're not just comfortable expressing themselves during sex, they make a point of it. And they make their lovers comfortable enough to do the same. So please loosen up and let your emotions and your laughter and your tears flow. Number three sign, you are disconnected from your pleasure. 
Men have pretty much been told that what they want is penetration and everything else is window dressing. But if you don't take the time to examine your own wants and desires and then communicate those with your partner, then you're not actually going to be all that good at sex. At best, you'll get good at pleasing somebody else, but that's not really the whole point of sex. It's just one part of it. Great sex is connective and she wants to please you as much as you want to please her. I can promise you that. If you aren't comfortable with your your kinks, your desires, your needs, as well as expressing your pleasure like moaning and groaning, then that means that you also have got room to grow. It's okay to make noise. It's okay to want intimacy and eye contact. It's okay to have specific little kinks and preferences. I mean, how are you supposed to please another person if you aren't comfortable with getting pleasure yourself? Number two sign, we're almost there. This one's harsh, but it's true you finish too fast. There are many things that you could do to please a woman that don't involve having great control over your orgasm, but here is the thing. Unless you have a very, very rare physiological condition, you can learn how to last longer in bed. I have a course that costs less than the cost of a sex toy. It has a 98% success rate. If you haven't learned how to last long enough to please a woman by this time, guys, that's on you. No more excuses. Get my come when you want course and get in there. If you haven't checked it out yet, go into the link in the description, see for yourself. 90 day money back guarantee. All right, number one sign that you are not great in bed is that you lack confidence. Now look, when I say confidence, I don't mean that you have to walk into every single sexual situation thinking that you are amazing in bed, that you know exactly what you're doing at every single moment with every single lover, no matter what. True confidence simply means being comfortable in your skin, present in the moment. This is the kind of confidence that says like, I'll figure it out. Even if you listen to this list and you've come out thinking that you've got some work to do in order to be a great lover, you still have every reason to feel confident in yourself. Confidence in the bedroom comes from the understanding that no one is perfect. And as long as you're there to connect and explore, to be open, to be curious, to be compassionate with the person in front of you, you're going to be great. It's the most confident people that are comfortable with asking for guidance, acknowledging that they have shit to learn, diving into situations with openness, with intrigue, knowing that they're gonna figure it out and they'll make it feel good. Since you made it to the end of this video, I believe that you've got a pretty good start on that. And remember, if you are looking for a fast lane to making some major changes in your sex and relationship life, please apply for coaching. Me and my team of certified sex and relationship coaches offer one-on-one -on -one guidance that is tailored to you, no matter what you're struggling with, no matter what it is that you wanna create in your sex life, even if you don't know what you wanna create. There is nothing like working with a world-class sex and relationship coach. We have collectively helped thousands of people to get the kind of sex life that they want and deserve, and we can do it for you as well. I'm Kaylin B. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you here next week. Bye-bye.